Ollie, here we are once again. Yep. What you can say now after an all too familiar story of poor performance and a heavy defeat? Well, there's not a lot. Uh, not a big point saying too much uh, about it, apart from, you know, we didn't handle the first half at all. We uh, got out fought in the first half and we, let, we allow them to get into our box too easy. And that's, uh, that's costly when you've got a direct and a physical team like Watford. That's that part of it. We never, uh, never got on the ball either. Second half is so much better. Uh, I think they we create four or five, six big chances. So if we give ourselves a mountain to climb, you, you just can't catch two goals in, in the Premier League. Could you believe how poor you were in the first half? David De Gea said to us it was embarrassing. Yeah, first half was very, very poor. And we need to uh, get the players in a better frame of mind to start the game, because second half, when they, it seems like they've got nothing to lose, they're, uh, they're playing well. They play well second half. So, I mean, you, you know you've come off of awful results. Yeah. Why weren't the players in the right frame of mind? Well, What's that's... wrong there? <laughs> uh, sorry for... Uh, for smiling there, but that's you know that's human beings, and uh, uh, I've got to say uh, you're surprised because all these all these lads, good lads, top players, top professionals. This, um, of course, when it's not going for you, it's going against you, and that's it's hard for uh, to play with with that uh, call it mental uh, mental break. Second half, you we come out nothing to lose. They played. Fantastically, scored loads of it, or scored a good goal, created chances, but of course it's, uh, it wasn't enough. But did the individual errors continue? The Harry Maguire one, which led to his second yellow, is that typical of the errors these top class players are making at the moment? Yeah, you know, that's a, it's a yellow card. It's a bad touch and a yellow card, but the first yellow card should never have been because he's off, the boy is offside, so, but that's nitpicking. But that's, uh, that's for another day because. Uh, 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 when lads are offside and you you get a book in, that should be looked at as well. Uh, anyway, it's um, it was a mistake, and that's uh, we had the uh, the upper hand in the second half. We pressed them back. I thought we played well for another five ten minutes after that, but then uh, energy died, and they they scored two goals to finish the game off. You said before today you were hoping this would be the yeah. start of something, a run. Yeah. It's not. It's the continuation yeah. of a terrible run. Yeah. Where do you go from here? No, it's, it's a definite, uh, definite, uh, big, big challenge for everyone, uh, everyone in and around the club. Uh, so that's uh, that's the big question. And that's uh, not for here and now. That's five defeats out of the last seven league games. Yeah. Would you understand if the board decided to make a change? Well, I'm working for and with the club, and I've done that. I've been there for 18 years, and of course I'm. Uh, We've got a good communication, and if, if the club uh, uh, are thinking about doing something, that's uh, that's a conversation between us and not you and me. I understand what you're saying, but yeah. with those statistics for Manchester United, is that acceptable? The results are not uh, good enough, we know that. Uh, we've gone 30 games unbeaten away from home, now we we'll lose two on the bounce, conceding four goals in both of them. So, of course, something's wrong. What was behind your gesture when you went across to the fans? You put your hands up at the end. No, what was I, the thought? I feel for the fans, and I feel with the fans, and I'm, I feel the, the same as them. It's uh, we're embarrassed losing uh, the way we do. We know we've been, we are in a in a very bad run, a bad situation. But that's part of football, and I know they'll support the team and whoever's uh, on the pitch every single day and then sometimes you've got to say sorry and that was a, a sorry for the uh, performance. How concerned are you Ollie about your position? You know the manager carries the can, yeah. you're yeah. not turning it around and the performances are not acceptable. You know that's uh, that's not for me to, um, to worry about. I work as hard as I can, as well as I can with the staff I've got, incredible staff, and as I said good top people, good professional players uh, but at the moment, we're not getting the results. So I understand your question. So um, that's, uh, but as I said, I'm not going to discuss that with, uh, with you here and now. How low are you feeling right now? Well, I'm very, to put it that way. 
Hello, Gunnar Solskjaer. Speaking to Jeff Shreves a few moments ago after that 4-1 defeat for Manchester United um, this afternoon. Let's bring Sue in. We've, we've heard, we'll hear more from the guys here in the studio. Um, Sue, so I know you watched the, the Manchester City game a couple of weeks ago. I know you were doing another game today, but a 4-1 defeat. Can he survive this, do you think? Oh. Well, can he survive it? Yes, I think he can. I think that the guys were sort of talking about that, that if it was going to happen, it probably would have happened before the international break. Should he survive it? No, I don't think so. I think something has to change, Jules. And, you know, I look back to the start of the season and there was so much positivity around Manchester United, the signings of Varane and, and Sancho and, and Ronaldo. And you thought, wow, they're, they're going to really compete this season. They finished second last season. They're going to be right up there. Watch them against Liverpool, so far off it against Liverpool. Then watch them against Manchester City. Again, the gulf between the two sides were huge. Now this result against Watford, against a side that are going to be really struggling at the, the lower ends of, of the table. It's difficult and, and yes, the, the minimum requirement of players is to make sure that you work hard. You're not seeing that in this side. You're seeing a very disjointed side. But also, at times, I wonder tactically, are they doing the right things? You, you looked at Liverpool, they went to press. They didn't quite press. They didn't go together. Liverpool just played round them against Manchester City. Didn't have the right system. Then they changed it. Manchester City completely dominated that game. So, yes, it's a combination of, of players and manager but it always falls on the manager. And I just think it's time something has to change. Something has to change, the Sue, because the next three games, by the way, they go to the league leaders, Chelsea, next weekend. Then they've got Arsenal, who are flying. We'll see how they get on against Liverpool tonight. And then they've got Palace, who are in good form themselves. Tim, you've been a manager. You've had the microphone thrust in your face, as Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had to then. How's he going to be feeling right now? That's the worst part of it, obviously, when you're losing games and someone's asking you the questions. But it's not, you know, you've all got to eat, you know, that's your job. You know, you got to, uh, Jeff had to do his job there. He's had to ask them difficult questions. Um, he obviously likes him, we all like him. We all like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, not, not one of us who doesn't, but it's not about that. It's about what we're witnessing when they, when his team step on the over that line. And at the moment, you have to say, and he admits it, it's not good enough. And, uh, you know, likes of Van Gaal and, and David Moyes and Jose Mourinho, they've managed that football club and, and they've done a lot better and they've lost their jobs so they must be thinking or oh, scratching their head thinking wow what's this boy got to do to lose his job you know he's been there three and a half years and it's getting from bad to worse we don't think he can get any worse but it, it, it is every single week it seems to be getting worse um listen he, he can only do what he can do until he gets that phone call he has to get on that training field and he has to work tirelessly and the group the players have to come to terms with the fact that they're at the biggest club in the world and they have to start sweat sweating blood for the shirt uh, i don't see that when i look at man united play and like I say, it's not about high blocks, low blocks, half presses, all this new terminology, what we hear all the time, nothing about that. It's about what's underneath your shirt. Have you got the heart for it? Have you got the gut? Have, do you want to go and get on that football? Do you want to press? Do you want to put your body on the line? You know, all these little principles, what you need to be a top player at Manchester United. And at the moment, it's a void in their game. It's just a load of individuals thrown onto the pitch and waiting for a superstar like Ronaldo to get them out of fire. And today can do it. And he hasn't been able to do it for a couple of weeks now. And just finally, Merce, on this, if this was happening at Chelsea, Manchester City, Liverpool, if they were in this position with these results and this league position right now, would they have acted by now or be acting now? Uh, I don't think it would have been now, if I'm being honest. It's three and a half years now. Without a trophy, this is the biggest club in the world. I mean... For me, that's that's what it says, you know. But I, I you know, I've always said I'm, you know, I'm not the biggest fan, but I, I don't like what I'm seeing from the players, you know, Bruno Fernandes here. I mean, you know, just saying it's us, it's us. As Tim said, they have their opportunity. 90, 90 odd minutes of football, they got to perform, you know, and that's why his job is under severe pressure. This should never happen. There's not one Watford player that could walk into the Man United team, not one. So how's that result happen? It can only happen through desire. It can't happen through anything else by desire because if, if they all play to the best of their ability, there's no way that Watford can beat Man United. And, and today, you know, it's, it's a hard one because, you know, they've got a big Villarreal game coming up on Tuesday. Do you go to Villarreal with no one? I don't think you can. I mean, this is what they're holding on to now is, is the Champions League.